Hello, biology students. Today we're going to be talking about pedigrees, genetic family trees. Oops, what is a pedigree? It is a record that shows how traits are inherited over several generations. It shows heredity. Sometimes it can help us show how a genetic disease moves through a family. It helps us understand what type of inheritance that genetic disease might be. All the symbols in a pedigree mean something, and we're going to go through all of them right now. A female is shown as a circle, and a male is shown as a square. Some ways to remember that are that females are curvier than males. Okay? Marriage is shown as a symbol or horizontal line connecting the two partners. Offspring are shown as a vertical line from the marriage. Generations are shown as Roman numerals, all right, starting at the top as the oldest generation, moving downwards to their children and children's children. So if we were going to look at this example, which is going to be about dimples, which happens to be a dominant trait over three generations, we would see a couple of things. We'd see the three generations here in Roman numerals. We'd see that some of the symbols are filled in. Some of them are open symbols. The filled in ones are black here. We see a marriage and their children, a marriage and children, a marriage and children, etc. Okay? Your goal is going to be to read the scenario on the next slide. And using this pedigree, which you're going to have to draw in your notes, you're going to write the correct name of each person underneath the correct symbol. Remembering that filled in means that they have the trait, in this case, dimples. So if it's filled in, that means that person has dimples. So you're going to write their name underneath, all right? So here's the drawing again if you need to draw it, and here's our scenario. Although Maria and Ralph Smith have dimples, their daughter Angie does not. Ralph's dad, Mr. Smith, has dimples, but his mother, Mrs. Smith, and his sister, Michelle, do not. Maria's dad, Mr. Flores, and her brother, Luis, and her sister, Marcella, do not have dimples, but her mother, Miss Flores, does. So pause here, reread the scenario, draw your pedigree, and try to use all of the yellow words and label them on all the correct symbols. Pause and draw and label. Okay, hopefully you gave it your best effort. Let's try to figure out and check our answers. Okay, so the first part says Maria and Ralph Smith have dimples. So I am writing Maria and Ralph, who are married, with these two symbols that are filled in, representing that they, in fact, do have the trait dimples. They're filled in and dark. Maria is the circle, because that's female, and this is her husband, Ralph. And her daughter does not have dimples. The daughter's name is Angie. All right, let's keep going. Mr. Smith does have dimples, which is why he is a filled-in symbol. Okay, but his mother, Mrs., uh, but his, but his mother, Mrs. Smith, and his sister, Michelle, do not. Okay, Mrs. Smith is his mother, Ralph's mother, and Michelle, their daughter, his sister, do not. Ralph and Michelle are siblings the daughter and brother of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Ralph, though, is married to Maria. Next, Mr. Flores, all right, is Maria's dad. Okay, he's a square. And Maria's brother is which of these symbols? The square. And her sister do not have dimples, but who does? Mrs. Flores. So that was pretty tough, all right? Not only do we have to be able to read the relationships between them, we also are going to have to distinguish and figure out the genotypes for all of these individuals in future pedigree situations. To learn more about that, let's keep going. 
How do we write the genotypes in a pedigree? Well, it depends if our pedigree is a dominant trait pedigree or a recessive trait pedigree. Let's suggest it's our dimple scenarios, which is a dominant pedigree. That would be big D represents dimples, little d is normal. That would mean our filled in circle or filled in square represent people who have dimples. Oh. Their genotypes are going to be different than the people who are normal or not filled in. The possible genotypes for someone who has the filled in symbols could be big, B, big D, big D, or big D, little d. Why is it possible they could be heterozygous? Ah, because it's not clear maybe do they have a hidden trait. This does not show hidden traits very well. Okay, as long as I have a big D, I have dimples in a dominant pedigree. What is it only possibly going to be if it's a not filled in symbol? Uh-huh, little d, little d, great. So that's for a dominant pedigree. Many times, and more often than not, we're going to do pedigrees that are recessive pedigrees. They're really interesting, and more often than not, disorders are recessive. And it's really fun to try to investigate how disorders move through generations. So a recessive trait pedigree, for instance, could be about something like sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is when the red blood cell shapes like a sickle or a weird looking sword or scythe, right? Instead of being this good circular tube that could fit through blood vessels well, this guy accidentally will get stuck in the veins and in the arteries and it makes it harder for the person to breathe. So normal in a recessive pedigree is actually the uppercase letter. And the abnormal is a recessive trait, the sickle cell. So in this case, to have sickle cell, I am the dark symbol. Dark symbols always are thing of interest. Thing of interest is always our dark circle. Normal, sickle cell. We always use the dark symbols for our thing of interest. In this case, as long as I have one uppercase letter, I am normal. The only option for sickle cell is to be two lowercase letters, or homozygous recessive. In class, we will do practicing of writing down these different letters or genotypes on different types of pedigrees. Great job, guys. You got the basics down.